Welcome to Finance and Excel video number 94. Hey, if you want to download this workbook for chapter 10, click on the link directly below the video and scroll all the way down to the Excel class, Excel finance class section. Hey, we've got to talk about period returns when you hold a stock for less than a year. In our first example, we'll see months and then we'll see one for days. So we have a stock, we hold it for four months exactly. We bought it at uh, time at uh, time zero at 52.25 and then we sold it in four months. So the first trick is we want to calculate um, the period return. What was our return for just this four months? So we sold it at 53 so we simply say equals end divided by begin minus one. So that we earned 1.43% for our four month period. Now, in order to calculate APR, annual percentage rate, that's the nominal rate. And the effective annual rate, we are going to have to calculate the number of periods f per year. Now, it looks like I already did it here. I didn't mean to do that. We're going to simply say equals 12 divided by our four months. And that tells us how many periods. Because if we have whatever return it is for whatever number of periods, if we're going to calculate an annualized rate, we need to know how many periods there were earning this rate here. Now we can simply use the uh, nominal function. Sorry, I'm sorry, not the nominal function. We simply, for APR, the definition of APR is, hey, take the period rate times the number of periods. So 4.13. Now, since we're compounding and interest is being added uh, and our number of periods is greater than 1, the effective annual rate will be slightly larger. Now, the effect function is great, but it works perfectly if this number of periods per year is an integer. And it is for us here. So I'm, and in our next example, it won't be. I'm going to use the nominal rate, APR, and then number of periods. All right, so there's our effective annual rate. It's going to be a little bit bigger than our APR anytime you have n number of periods greater than 3. Now, let's see this example here. So we uh, bought a stock 32 days, right? So same example here, but we held it. I'm just using the same numbers here, but uh, well, it's a different stock, right? But we hold it for 32 days, and we make it increases a little bit. So let's figure out our period return. Same formula as before, n divided by begin minus 1. So it's the same return, but over a shorter period of time. All right, now, the, tr the trick is we've got to figure out number of periods. Now, I'm going to assume that it's 365. It would be easy enough if it was a leap year to calculate uh, 366. But now I'm going to take uh, 365 and divide by 32. So we're saying how many 30-day, 30 32-day periods are there in one year? Here we have number of periods per year, which throughout this class we've called n. That is not an integer. So the effect function will not work. We can still do APR. Definition is number of periods times the period rate. Wow, hey, look, that's looking good. And then the EAR, we're going to say uh, not effect. We're simply going to take open parentheses 1 plus our period rate and raise it to caret, the actual number of periods, and then subtract 1. And so 17.65 is our effective annual rate. If you use the effect, um, and some people do use it anyway, because it's all maybe you're estimating right from this data here. But if we took our, no our nominal and did this, all the effect does, and if you go up to help, it'll tell you it truncates this. So it'll use 11. So we're going to get a, a slightly smaller number. All right, we'll see you next video.